The Live Golf Adelaide 2023 press conference. We are joined by the Premier of South Australia, Peter Malinowskis, Cam Smith, the captain of Ripper GC, and Greg Norman, the CEO and commissioner of Live Golf. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. So I'll start with you, Premier. Um, you know, there's been a lot of anticipation for this event. You know, the the excitement is palpable in South Australia at yeah. this event. Has this met your expectations so far or exceeded them? Easily. In fact, they ex it exceeded my expectations the moment those tickets went on sale and they sold out within minutes. I remember I, um, I called my team when I saw the sold out sign going on the banner on the website. I said, something's gone wrong. <laughs> um, someone didn't put the tickets online when we said they're on sale. <laughs> and they went back and checked and said, no, you're not going to believe it. Um, it's sold out. So. Look, the anticipation has been here from the get-go. Uh, we're just so wrapped to have yet another weekend of extraordinary um, hospitality activity in our state. It's good for the local economy. Um, we've seen that come through um, over the last couple of weeks. But what we're particularly excited about, if I'm frank, is that the power of the game of golf um, at such a high elite professional level um, to be able to draw the eyes of the nation indeed internationally, on our city and our state. And that is a wholeheartedly good thing. And we're very grateful to have this partnership with LIV to be able to deliver that. We do see it as a partnership. Um, LIV is obviously a relatively new format of the game of golf. And as far as Australian golfing fans are concerned, it's been a long time coming. And it didn't, from my perspective, um, it didn't take much of a genius to work out that there is an appetite for high quality golf in Australia. Uh, we've been yearning for this and LIV provides us the opportunity to, to enjoy that and experience that and it is the South Australian economy that will be a major beneficiary of it. That's great. Well, thank you for hosting us. Um, one more for you. I know a lot of the players and the players' families and even LIV golf staff have had an opportunity to enjoy South Australia this week. Everything from shark diving to an AFL game. I know people have gone to the Cleveland Wildlife Park. Has this really given an opportunity to showcase what South Australia yeah, has to offer? Absolutely. And, and that was very much the whole idea. Um, we have got a story to tell. And sometimes Adelaide and South Australia hasn't got the attention that we think we deserve. Sometimes it's the Queenslanders that have had too much attention. So, uh, you know, th that is the opportunity to be able to showcase everything our state has to offer. And the fact that we've got a, you know, a long-term partnership with LIV, we'll see that occur year in, year out in a way that we believe can only grow. That's great. Thank you. And Greg, question for you. You are the native son returning home to Australia. What does this mean to you? And what does this mean to LIV to be here in Australia and have this incredible reception? <laughs> Well, it's actually a uh, multiple fronts, to be honest with you. Um, from a player of being 45 years of uh, supporting the game of golf down under uh, to you know, being involved with business, understanding what the brand is, but actually being an Australian, um, my responsibility when I was asked to be the CEO and the commissioner of the Live Golf uh, League uh, was to eventually, as soon as I possibly could, bring an event to Australia. Why? Um, because I've truly believed, as I just mentioned, of 45 years of playing the game of golf down here and supporting Australian golf, that Australia really has never seen the best of the best on a consistent, regular basis. Yeah, we've had the President's Cup here. Yeah, we've had the World Cup here. We've had events down here, there's no question. But an event of this magnitude, of this breadth and depth of footprint, product, deliverables, Everything you, every, everything you need uh, has never been delivered here before. Uh, we have not coming in here just slashing and burning and disappearing. We've made a commitment, and you heard the Premier mention the one word which is very, very important to me and to live is partnership. Um, it's a partnership uh, with the state. It's a partnership with the country, uh, but it's a partnership for the game of golf. And forgetting all the white noise that everybody writes about and talks about, this is all about the game of golf and what's good for the game of golf and what's good for the, the local region. So from my perspective, having the ability to be able to move the needle in that direction and to be involved with the South Australian government or any other country around the world is, is a, a very, very powerful and poignant point for as far as I'm concerned. And uh, we are here, we're going to, we've embraced this area I said to the Premier when we first came down here, before our first press conference, um, we are here for the long term. 
We want to create an economic impact to this region that's never been done before through the game of golf. And I think we're delivering on that now. The, to see how this, this area has embraced us, not only just from Adelaide's standpoint, which I think is the biggest, smallest city in the world, uh, which is now the focal point of global golf. The Premier mentioned South Australia, Australia, but we really are this next 72 hours. Uh, we are the focal point. And the next 72 hours, you will see the true live product. And the Australians have embraced that by selling out um, TV cameras, media, Channel 7, uh, corporations, uh, hospitality, tourism, um, the, the great work. I've been lucky enough to love South Africa since 1976 when I first came down here. So I was near and dear to my heart. Um, I actually flew with the head of Penfold Grange yesterday from back from Melbourne. So we were reminiscing back in 76, and here we are at the Grange Golf Club. There's so many great touch points as far as I'm concerned. So for us to be able to uh, significantly make a, a huge economic impact to this community is near and dear personally to me, uh, but also as a CEO and commissioner of LIV. Well, thank you for helping us bring it down here. Cam, one for you. I've had the privilege of being able to follow you around a little bit this week and see the throngs of fans chasing you down. I even heard a woman say she felt faint after seeing you. So oh, wow. <laughs> what does it mean to you to be home and be like this massive superstar? Is it, you know, is it a surreal experience for you? Yeah, absolutely. It is a little bit surreal, I think. Um, you know, I was fortunate enough to be down here in November and uh, played a couple of events, but um, you know, as these two guys just said, I think Adelaide has been starved a little bit for really high-level golf, and um, you know, Adelaide's done a really good job over the past couple of weeks of not only bringing golf, but the footy was down here last weekend. Um, the town definitely has a buzz to it, um, and it's great to be a part of. I know I was uh, able to take you to the merch shop to show you your very first T-shirt with your face on it. Are you going to be wearing that this week? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe... Uh... Maybe maybe another time, not, <laughs> not not around town. I think, um, yeah, I'm trying to uh, be incognito. Well, you're gonna going to have a hard time with that. <laughs> Great, thanks, guys. I'm going to open it up to the room. Oh, who has the microphones? Bring it over here. If you can state your name and your outlet, please. Sure. Steve Lark, an Australian Associated Press. Um, Welcome, Greg. Can I just touch on your emotions? You, you mentioned 1976, your first pro win. Um, what are your recollections of that? And now to come back in, in such a powerful position, I guess. Um, any sense of irony or, or, yeah, what's your emotions about that? I wouldn't say irony. A lot of emotion, to be honest with you. I, I've walked into the... I've been here before. Obviously, I've been involved with redoing the golf course. Um, so I've had a very uh, tight connection with the Grange Golf Club. Um, and like I said, with Adelaide. So from my perspective, it's, it's you know, I have to kind of take a step back because it's, it's all about what live is of the league and what we're doing here this week. But also I realized that there was a, a powerful impact that I made to myself, not to Adelaide or anything, by winning the third golf tournament I ever played in my life. Um, so this was the catalyst. I mean, this started my career. Uh, I had a 10-shot lead after 54 holes, and I thought I was bulletproof, right? And I thought the game of golf was so easy. But if I didn't win at Westlake's Classic the way I did in 76, I wouldn't have had that injection of massive amount of confidence to go on and continue my career of winning and winning and winning and amassing the number of tournaments I did. So, yeah, it's, it's always going to be part of me. It's always going to be in my heart, and I'm just glad we're here. Just, just a quick follow-up, just on the, um, I guess the future of live. Where, where do you see it in two or three years? Um, do you hope that the PGA and yourselves can come to the table, and, and what's it going to take to, to get to that point to have meaningful mm -hmm. discussions? No, that's a fair question. Um, look, we are not going anywhere. Um, live is here for a long, long period of time. We've said that from the outset. Also, from the outset, we've also said that uh, we want to coexist uh, within the golf ecosystem. Um, there was a, uh, from our perspective or my perspective, it's product. Uh, we have a product that the, the fans want. We have a product that the uh, state government of South Australia wants. 
uh, we have a product that corporations and television wants. You have other products as well too. You have the PGA Tour. You have the DP World Tour. You have the Asian Tour. You have the Japanese Tour. Happy days to all that. There's nothing wrong with that. We encourage since day one wanting the Cam Smiths of the world and every one of our other 47 players to go play other tournaments they want. If they want to stay with Live and solely Live, happy days. That's your choice as an independent contractor. But consistently from day one, we've tried to work with both tours to make sure that we are here for a long, long period of time. We want to be part of the system, your system, as much as you be part of our system. It's their, they've made their decision We've made our decision to showcase to the world the product that we truly have, the business model that really works. And I hope everybody here really unpacks that business model, which is the franchise model. Look what Kerry Packer did with cricket. God bless him. He sits on my right shoulder every day. Trust me, every day. <laughs> he goes, son, you're doing a good bloody job. I would say another word, but that's what he always said. But... Uh, so I know the, the value of what we recognize as investors into the game of golf. We know the value or the starvation of what golf has not delivered, which is the franchise value. Cam Smith, the leader of the Rippers, his future is incredible. Not only is an individual player, but an owner of a team. And nobody's really focusing in on that, that we, that we live identified that opportunity. And that's the product. That's the ability. PJ Tour's got a great tour. We're happy for them. I'm happy for them. I grew up on the PJ Tour. So did Cam, right? I grew up on uh, playing in the European Tour. I hope they exist and keep existing. But it's their choice of what they want to do. And if they want to put a, keep putting up roadblocks, we're not going to go anywhere. We've got a great product. We've got investment dollars there today, investment dollars into the future that will continue to be there because of guys like this. We see the value that they can deliver and we see the undervalue of what their worth is today as independent contractors in the sport of golf. That's great. Over there. Greg Kimberley from Seven News. I just wanted to know, are you looking at expanding the Australian leg to Queensland next year? Look, right now we're focused for the next 72 hours. I've walked through the production truck and spoken to everybody from the director to the producer to... I haven't spoken to the commentators yet. Our next 72 hours will show the Australia and the world what the product is. So that's our focus today. Um, but trust me, this morning, because of the impact the Premier and his tourism department and the state has done in this, in this country, my phone is ringing off the hook. I can, but it's not just Australia, it's the rest of the world as well. So it's a compliment to the message that the, the state government has delivered here for, on behalf of their constituents, right? The message is getting out there. And the product is showing itself, and, and like we just touched on with Cam. So we focus the next 72 hours, and let's see what happens after that. I'm going to go over here. Microphone gets there. Uh, thank you. Rory McLaren from ABC News. I have two questions, one for Mr Norman and then one for the Premier. Um, Mr Norman, in your time with... As I work <laughs> around the light pole... Um, in your time with Live Golf, have you ever had a conversation with Mohammed bin Salman or any of the senior leadership of the Public Investment Fund about Saudi Arabia's human rights record? Nope, I have not. Why not? Because I'm, I'm the chairman and CEO of Live Golf Investments, and that's where I focus. I focus on golf. I stay focused on golf. My job is to, to build out Live and the, the product and the platform we have on a global front. We have nine events in the U.S. and five elsewhere. That's my job. My job is to help Cam and the Rippers and 11 other team members identify their future value and understand what it is. Golf is a force for good. Um, I've been involved with golf, like I said, as a player as well as a golf course designer. I've built some golf courses in third world countries. I've built golf courses in communist countries. So golf is a force for good. It goes everywhere with the right platform because it delivers the right message. 
from education to hospitality to employment to tourism, everywhere you go, golf is a force for the good. And I'm blessed, I really am blessed, that I've found a career and I've found a opportunity as I look out into the future of my business world about what golf has given me this opportunity. So I'm here for that reason and that reason only. Thank you. And to you, Premier, considering the continued concerns that are raised by human rights advocates about this tour being a sports washing exercise for the Saudi regime, how do you justify the undisclosed millions of dollars that have been spent on this particular tournament to concerned members of your Labor Party, concerned members of your caucus and concerned members of the South Australian community more broadly? Um, quite comfortably, Rory, because I think the answers to those questions are... are best lie in, in the truth um, and the facts that we've got before us. So if I deal with the second part of your, your question first, and I'll gladly deal with the, the first element, um, the economic benefit of the South Australian government's investment in major events I think has been well demonstrated over the course of last weekend uh, and already what we're seeing throughout the course of this weekend. Uh, we established the major events um, attraction fund with a very deliberate uh, purpose and set of objectives and key performance indicators that we wanted to mench, uh, measure those investments against. And thus far, I think the evidence speaks for itself. So in terms of the, the investment from the state government, we see the return and the value of it, and we'll continue to scrutinise that. Um, we, we measure the performance after the fact, um, not just on the anticipation, which there is no shortage of in respect to live. And we measure that and we, we are rightly held to account um, for those KPIs. In respect to the first element of your question, I think as a nation, um, and indeed South Australia, we've got a really proud track record of advocating on behalf of the cause of humanity, generally, when it comes to human rights considerations. And uh, all of the actions of the State Government and the Commonwealth, I think, have remained consistent with those principles. Um, we're here now in a Western Liberal democracy and you're asking me questions such as the one that you've just put, Rory. And that's nothing wrong with that. That's a good thing. And I will always grab any opportunity I've got to advocate for the causes that we all share. Um, but this is about a golf tournament. There is no... Uh, Live Golf is here exclusively in its capacity putting on a high-quality and elite golf tournament. Now, I accept um, and acknowledge that it's an incredibly competitive marketplace. Greg's already talk to the number of tours that exist within the golf market globally. And I also accept the fact that with that high degree of competition, particularly when you see a degree of disruption, there will be people that um, I think are, are motivated, uh, if not incentivised monetarily, to advocate against the competition using whatever means they have at their disposal. But something I, sometimes I do think that that has been overlooked in the context of this discussion and this debate. But as a nation, Rory, as you are well aware, um, the Commonwealth Government, over a period of decades, has actively chosen to engage with a whole range of very substantial trading partners, and Saudi Arabia is no exception. Um, just pre-COVID, um, only, you know, like I said, just prior to the, to the pandemic, before borders shut down, uh, South Australia welcomed, welcomed with open arms the Saudi Arabia Defence Minister right here in Adelaide at the Land Forces Conference without so much as a question from, from media outlets. Um, you know, we sell extraordinary amounts of barley, beef, lamb, amongst other things, um, to Saudi Arabia. It's a $3 billion trading partnership between Australia and Saudi Arabia. They have $4 billion worth of active investments in Australia alone. Um, so we choose as a country uh, to actively trade with Saudi Arabia, the largest economy within the Middle East, within the Middle East, and we do that knowingly, without at any step of the way compromising what we collectively believe in as a country. But, um, but, live is not um, a, a representative of Saudi Arabia. Uh, live is a golf tournament. Live is a golf tour, and it's shaking things up. Um, and I think that's a good thing. Um, and I think the best thing they've done is acknowledge that in Australia we have been actively deprived um, of highly professional, the world's best golfers, 
uh, performing here in Australia in the size and the scale that is now occurring. So at the moment, um, there was an opportunity for Australia to embrace that. Uh, it doesn't surprise me one iota that they've actively chosen to do that in extraordinary volumes. And that's a good thing. Um, we're going to see tens of thousands of Australians walking around Greyridge Golf Club this weekend enjoying golf. And uh, that's a good thing, uh, uh, without qualification. Over there. Richard Adams from the UK Independent Newspaper. Um, question for Greg. Greg, will there ever be a women's live golf, golf tour, do you think? That is a discussion we have internally on a regular basis. Um, I have personally had discussions with individual LPGA tour players, uh, LET tour players, Ladies European Tour. They love what uh, our product is showcasing. Uh, they ask all the time, how can we get involved? We'd love to see a Live Ladies series. Um, so from our perspective, we are focused. Last year was a beta season. We had eight events. This year is our first season where we're kicking off, right? We can only drink out of a fire hydrant so much, right? <laughs> so we have a lot of opportunities and initiatives coming across our plate. Our focus is to make sure this year we, we produce what we're producing here from day one in 2023. And then going forward, we're looking at what are the best opportunities to bolt on to what we have today. So the answer to the question is, yes, we talk about it internally. And I have had discussions with individual uh, lady players, professional players. There's one over here. Greg, hi, Peter from SBS News. Saw the clinics here yesterday and I was wondering if you could tell us to what extent Liv is investing in grassroots golf and if you think that this is the right format to guarantee your legacy for developing a net, the next generation. I will answer this, uh, I'll answer the latter part of your question first, the legacy. Um, I've asked this, they've been asked this question a lot about my legacy. Um, and I truly believe that my legacy from 20 years ago to my legacy today are two different things. My legacy of what I'm doing with Liv will be my legacy because it's the right thing to do. And it also showcases, to your point, about creating these new pathways that we have for players. We invested $300 million into the Asian tour to give them the opportunity of a sleeping giant of a massive wealth of population of the game of golf. 65% of all golf courses in the world built today are from the GCC to the Asian Pacific Rim. 65%. And one third of the population in the world, maybe a bit more, live in that region. So you can see from just a logical business perspective from where the game of golf is going for the next 25 years, maybe 30 years. I've seen it in Vietnam for the last eight to 12 years. And there's another, at least another 25 years to go in Vietnam alone. So when you look at these opportunities that the game of golf is delivering to and a powerful impact to these countries, right? Um, the opportunity, you're also looking at the opportunity, how do you reach down to these kids? So in one year, in eight golf tournaments, Liv has taken the lid off the aging demographics of the, the golfing fan, which is 67 and a half years old that follow the PGA Tour. In one year, we've taken that down. 65% of our viewers and fans are 45 years and younger. So all of a sudden, because of our product, is now identified to a younger fan base. So now, we'd like today, when I was going out here today, it's the first time we've had spectators in a pro-am. The number of kids that are out there that, you know, I'm a lot older than 60 years and older than some of these kids, and they're coming up to me and going, Thank you, thank you, thank you. And I go, oh my gosh, there it is. This is what it's all about. We're reaching down so much quicker than I ever anticipated. Then you take into our CSR program that, again, we keep very, we talk about it, but we don't talk about it. But our CSR program is a massive effort globally to bring golf to certain regions of the world that have never had that exposure. So we, our 
from our perspective, our, our major goal is just to do what we're doing to create franchise value, but also spreading this cultural wealth across the world. And, and we are doing that today, and we, we will continue to do that. And I hope we reduce our 45 down to 35, down to 33, down to 32, and, and then you're going to have the, the next generation of the Cam Smiths of the world flooding and wanting to... I actually make this comment to you. I was in Arkansas about four months ago looking at a venue, and I didn't realize the venue that I was at was the, the home venue for the Arkansas Razorbacks golf team, girls and boys. And they knew they, they asked me if I would go and speak to them at the end of the day. Totally off the cuff, nothing rehearsed, nothing set up. And I spoke to them about Liv, because they only hear about Liv, they only read about Liv, and a lot of that stuff is not factual. So I spoke to these kids for maybe 45 minutes, standing there on the driving range. And without um, a shadow of any um, other doubt of saying, my gosh, this is not what we thought it was. I want to come play for Liv when I leave the college tour, when I leave college or leave my university or do that. Liv is, a, Liv is where I want to go. And I go, how easy was that? Right? Just tell the truth about what Liv is all about. Now all of a sudden you got this. Now those university kids are speaking to other university kids. Now all of a sudden we're creating this wave of interest into this younger uh, audience of great golfers, the next talented of American golfing generations, right? So that's what I feel so proud about, of unlocking or taking the lid off this, this informational, factual highway. There. Uh, hi, guys. Uh, Teddy Fenton with Luckiest Golfers on Earth. Uh, my question is for you, Mr. Norman. Um, <clears throat> you talked about the, the next 72 hours being vital uh, Liv is certainly on the upward trajectory coming off of what you guys did at the Masters. This event here was 75,000 people coming. Um, but I, I want to talk about the future a little bit. Um, you, you've mentioned it a few times in this press conference. Is there talk of team expansion in the next coming years? Um, and do you anticipate a line around the building, so to speak, of players wanting to come to the Live Golf League. Oh, that line is there, right? It's not an imaginary line. That line is already there. Cam will probably answer this more than I can because he was just playing at Augusta National, right? I know what my phone does, right? And I'm a generation removed from these guys. Um, so there is a massive interest of wanting to come and be on a Rippers team or be on a Four Aces team. Or be, there, is, there is an incredible amount of interest. We're full. We have 48 of the best players in the world that we're very, very happy with. Our goal is to build those franchise values out. Will there be relegation? Absolutely, there's going to be relegation. We're a league, right? So there will be a relegation system in place like any other league. Um, so there will be this pathway system we talked about um, with the Asian Tour and other opportunities as well. Um, so, you know, as we look into the future, um, you know, it's... The players want to come on board with us. They want to experience the experience that these guys are talking about. Um, so they're under contract for some are for four years, some are for five years. Uh, we have, that's our responsible that we responsibility that we have to have. Okay, in the back, uh, Martin Parry from AFP. Just for Greg, picking up on an earlier question, the relationship with the other tours. Um, DP World Tour obviously won their arbitration case against Liv a couple of weeks ago. Where does that leave Liv with the DP World Tour now? Um, can there really be any, you know, mutually beneficial cooperation cooperation between you guys and the European Tour and the US PGA Tour? And those players involved in that, Lee Westwood, Ian Poulter, is an appeal going to come? Are they going to revoke their DP World memberships? Where, where are we at? Well, Martin, I'm not going to go down the legal path and answer the questions on behalf of the decision of other players and what their decision is. Remember, you used one word there was arbitration. It wasn't a court of law, right? Arbitration is different. It was a prerequisite of some of the, 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 the writing in the agreement of how it had to take place, 
That's arbitration. So things will play out as they, they should rightly play out in the court of law, and that's the way it goes. That's the way it goes. Uh, I won't ask, like I said, I won't answer on behalf of the other players. That's, you should go up to them and ask them independently and individually if you want. Um, but all I can tell you is this, from a live perspective, uh, we'll always support our players. Um, we always had said that since day one. Um, we believe in where we're going, and like I've mentioned to you before about our product, and we're going to be unwavering in that commitment, and we're going to stay our course on that. I truly hope some way down the line, um, like the Masters, and I complimented the Masters about inviting the, the live players in, because the Masters and the Majors should be Switzerland. And the DP World Tour wants to have the best players on their tour as well, too. The DP World Tour wants to have some of the most iconic players that ever represented uh, Europe in the Ryder Cup on the Ryder Cup. So, you know, as you look into the future with the crystal ball, right, they've got to make some interesting decisions for themselves, right? for the players and where we're going to go and what we're going to do. Live is not changing anything. And we've always been consistent for the last 15 months of saying we're happy to sit down with you, we're happy to talk to you. We did with the DP World Tour. We've tried with the, the, the PGA Tour consistently with zero zilch and nothing. That's their choice. If that's your decision, fine. We're, we're okay with that. Um, so we'll just keep going, doing what we're doing, and do, doing my heart of hearts as a, now I'll put my player's hat back on, and I'll put my um, representation of the, the game of golf back on. I do hope that gets to a position where there is resolution to this, because the game of golf doesn't need to suffer. These guys don't need to suffer. OWGR doesn't need to suffer. The Augusta National recognized that. And look what happened with their ratings when the live players came in. It was up 19%. Who, who was the benefactor of that? Augusta National, right? So live is the, live is the, uh, live is the force, like the force for good. And now guys want to play. They want to play in the majors. And you don't think CBS, NBC, you don't think the corporations who sponsor those major championships don't want Cam Smith, the Open Championship, champion in the tournament? Of course they do. And it's a crying shame if they take the, the shallow view of because we live, we're another product, that they're going to ban these guys? Uh, well, I think Augusta National proved that case point very clearly. Okay, last parting question for all three of you. This should be a really easy one. We'll start with you, Premier. Who is your pick to win this week? What team is going to win? <laughs> should be easy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a few Aussies kicking around. Port Adelaide. You know, there's Port a Port Adelaide. Adelaide that's right. <laughs> Port, Port's got West Coast on Saturday. It's a must win. But um, no, I think, I think Ripper's looking pretty good. We're, we're pretty excited to have all four gentlemen here playing. I mean, like I said... Um, Aussies love their golf. That's been, I think it's already been proven this weekend. But to have them represented all in one team is pretty exciting. I mean, naturally, Cam gets all the focus. But, I mean, Mark Leishman has been one of the most outstanding golfers that Australia has ever produced. And, um, you know, seeing Mark alone is, you know... If I had said to South Australians, you know, 12 months ago that Mark Leishman would be playing at Grange, there would have been thousands of people coming just to see that. Um, and then, you know, Cam and the others, of course, just makes it even more special. So, uh, short answer, Rippers. All right. Cam, I know... That's pretty obvious, though. I wasn't going to say anything That's else. That's it. It's an easy question. <laughs> Cam, we already know you're going to pick Ripper, but who is the team to beat this week? I don't know. I haven't seen... Uh, I, know, uh, I know Smash. I know Brooksy's playing well. Uh, Phil had a good last couple of weeks as well. So, uh, yeah, there's a couple of guys to beat, I think... Um, Internally, we're probably quietly confident. We've spent a lot of time out in the course. Um, there's a lot of uh, a lot of good memories, I think, for everyone on Australian golf courses. So, um, yeah, we're we're quietly confident. Have you gotten any tips from Wade? <laughs> yeah, Wade's been around. Yeah, I've spoke to him a few times. I think um, he's been pulling me for a beer more than tips on the golf course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Greg, who's your pick? What team is going to take it home this week? Um, I think the Grange Golf Club is going to take it home because the the golf course is going to evolve, right? And what you see the golf course today, and we as players, we know it, uh, the golf course is going to change its footprint um, as the weather changes. Um, today the greens are fast. Tomorrow they'll be a little faster, a little drier. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see how some of these players approach this golf course because there's an art to playing the Grange Golf Club. It's not as easy as what you think it is when the greens get firm and fast. So I'm going to be the true commissioner and I'm going to say the, the Grange Golf Club is going to be the one that wins. Very commissioner <laughs> answer. Cam, it sounds like you need to pick Greg's brain on the way out. So, <laughs> gentlemen, thank you so much for joining thank us. You, thank you for hosting us in South Australia and Adelaide. If everyone wants to hang tight, Ripper GC thank is you. going to be doing a press conference shortly. And Cam, you can... Take a little break and come back. <laughs> Thank you, gentlemen.